The lives of five high school friends begin to change significantly when strange things start happening to them. They find themselves able to exchange souls with each other at any time and place. Amidst this bizarre phenomenon, they start hiding this truth from others. However, their troubles were far from over. After these exchanges, turmoil began in the lives of all five friends. The story begins with a boy named Teichi, who suddenly wakes up from his sleep, awakened by his sister. Once conscious, Teichi starts getting ready for school. On the other hand, we see Yui, who also wakes up feeling a bit puzzled. When she looks around her room and sees its state, she becomes extremely alarmed. However, the reason behind her panic remains a mystery that will be revealed as the story progresses. Next, we meet Itori, who, after waking up, is already prepared for school. Her mother is trying to make her breakfast, apologizing for waking up late and consequently being late in preparing her food. Simultaneously, we see Oki, who is ready for college and having dinner with his family. During breakfast, he is constantly messaging someone which displeases his parents. Nonetheless, he leaves for school. Shortly afterward, Teichu meets Ayori and they head to school together. Along the way, they encounter Himiko, and all of them go to school together. Upon reaching school, they see Yu and Oki talking together. Since they were all friends, they moved towards their classes together. It is then revealed that these five individuals are first-year students at the school and are required to join a club to stay. Unable to find a club that interests them, they decide to create their own club, and from that point on, they all stay together. A little while later, we see Taichi arriving at his club room, where he encounters Himeko, who is preparing to write some articles for her newspaper. She asks Taichi for some headline ideas, but instead, he starts talking about his favorite sport, wrestling, which ruins Himeko's mood. As they were talking, Iori arrives, lounging on the sofa in a way that Himeko finds inappropriate. Himeko reprimands her, but is surprised when Iori clarifies that she doesn't want any inappropriate behavior there and asks her for help with coming up with headlines for writing. Iori suggests that they should focus on vulgar photos as it would increase the sales of their newspaper, a proposal Himeko strongly dislikes and rejects. Himeko then tells Iori that if she wants to pursue that idea, she should do it herself. However, Iori refuses, saying that if they were to do a photo shoot, Tenchi should be the one chosen for it. According to Teichi, both girls should participate in the photo shoot for the magazine. After this discussion, they decide to publish this idea in their newspaper. They believe that Teichi's suggestion could cause a sensation throughout the newspaper, but it also increases Teichi's anxiety. After a while, Yu and Oki arrive, having something to share. Initially hesitant, they start to open up after Himeko's insistence. They reveal that the previous night, Yu and Oki's souls had swapped, and they were certain this had happened. However, when they share this with the rest, it's taken as a joke, and suggestions are even made to correct their act. Oki was firm in his belief that he was telling the truth. He suggested they could confirm his story by asking Yu if they didn't believe him. Yu initially agreed with Aoki, but started to doubt herself as the tension grew, beginning to think it might have been a dream. Following this admission, Aoki also began to wonder if he might have just dreamed it. As they were all talking, Aura remembered she needed to pick up some books from the library, so she left to get them. Meanwhile, the group continued their conversation. Suddenly, Teichi experiences something strange and finds himself in Yori's place. He was confused because he was just in the club room, but now he found himself in Yori's classroom. At this point, it became clear that Teichi's body had swapped with Yori's, but how it happened was unknown to him. Surprised and confused in Yori's body, Teichi inadvertently starts acting inappropriately, and then a girl named Fujisama witnesses him doing so. Seeing what she believes to be Yori behaving oddly, she offers to help, but Teichi, still trying to grasp the situation, attempts to extricate himself from it. Meanwhile, Yori, who has found herself in Teichi's body, sees Teichi in her body, behaving improperly with Fujisama and quickly takes him away from the scene. Shortly after, Teichi and Yori, now together in the club room, try to explain to the rest of their friends how they swapped bodies. When Himiko expresses skepticism, she begins asking them personal questions that only the real Teichi and Yori could answer. Astonishingly, they correctly answer all the questions confirming the body swap. Before they could discuss the matter further, Teichi and Yori's bodies revert to normal, leaving the truth partly unveiled before they could fully understand what happened. Subsequently, they decide to forget the incident and head home, not wanting their families to learn about it to avoid confusion and chaos. Afterward, they all return home, where we see Teichi waiting for his sister. He offers to take her out for ice cream, and the two of them head out to enjoy it. The next day arrives and Teichi is on his way to school when he encounters Yori and Root. He immediately checks with her to ensure that they haven't swapped souls again, relieved to find they are both in their normal states. However, just then, the rest of the club members arrive, and they all seem quite perplexed. Once they find a private spot, the members reveal to Iori and Teichi that this time three of them had swapped souls with each other. 
Hearing this, Iori and Taichi become momentarily worried, and they all go to a room to discuss the situation. After a while of chaos and confusion regarding the body swaps, everything returns to normal with everyone's souls reverting back to their original bodies. During this period of relief, they are summoned by their class teacher named Odo. Odo-sensei, known for his peculiar ways, wanted to know why they had been absent from their third period class. To save themselves, Yori explains that they missed the class because they were busy with some urgent work in their club room, which made them late. Convinced by their explanation, the class teacher allows them to leave. Stepping outside, they breathe a sigh of relief, marveling at how they managed to avoid getting into trouble. Afterward, they go about their various activities. At this time, we focus on Yui, who is chatting with her friends. Suddenly, there's a mix-up. Once again, a soul swap occurs, and this time, Keiichi's soul ends up in Yui's body. Confused by this new situation, Taichi and Yu's body decides to head to the restroom but mistakenly walks into the boy's restroom before realizing the error and quickly switches to the girl's restroom. In a panic, he calls Aori to inquire about his actual body and finds out that Yu too is troubled by this unexpected change. Eventually, their souls revert to normal once more. When Taichi enters the class, he notices Iori talking to Fujisawa. After their conversation, Iori becomes angry, having realized that during their last body swap, Teichi had inadvertently gotten too close to Fujisawa. Yori was upset about this incident and reprimanded Teichi for the mishap. Similarly, Yu was also angry with Teichi, because when she had returned her body last time, she found herself in the girl's restroom, implying that Teichi, in his haste, had chosen to enter the girl's restroom, which was inappropriate for a boy. While they were discussing these matters, their teacher Odo arrived, surprising everyone. However, Odo's sensei wasn't there without reason. He revealed that he was aware of their body swaps and advised them not to worry too much about it. With this revelation, they all learn that another person is inhabiting Odo's body, and this individual, named Hardseed, is the reason behind their body swapping troubles. Shocked by this, they question Hardseed in Odo's body about his motives, why he is troubling them, and what he hopes to gain from it. Hardseed responds that he chose them because he finds them interesting and enjoys seeing them distressed by the swaps. Hearing this, their concern deepens and Yui in anger attempts to attack Hardseed, but is unable to stand against him for even a second. They all try to persuade Odo, Hardseed, to stop meddling with them, but he outright refuses and suggests that they should work together to solve this issue. Before leaving, he also threatens them, saying that if they share this information with others, he could do even more dangerous things to them. After school, they all head home, discussing along the way that they should keep the switching problem to themselves. They agree that spreading this information could cause chaos if it reaches their homes. Together, they resolve to adjust to being in each other's bodies to avoid any suspicion. A week passes, and they still face minor issues, such as confusion and problems related to using the restroom. With no other option, they rely on each other's trust and eventually find peace with the situation. As they are heading home, another body swap occurs. This time, Yori's soul ends up in Aoki's body. When Aori in Aoki's body is about to touch you, she stops herself, reasoning that although she is Yori on the inside, she is in Aoki's body at the moment. In the next scene, we see Aori's soul and Teichi alone together, where Yori's soul reveals that she has become very distressed due to the continuous body swaps. She fears that if these swaps keep happening, they might eventually lose their own identities. By the time Teichi understands this concern, Yori's soul has already returned to her body. The following day, while Yori and Teichi are sitting together in class, Fujisawa asks all the students to volunteer for campus cleaning. Teichi decides to participate, but just as he's about to raise his hand, his soul swaps with Iori's body, leading to Iori's hand being raised instead. Seeing this, Iori's soul panics because she never wanted to work with Fujisawa, but now, following this mishap, she becomes concerned for her own body. Reacting quickly, she raises Teichi's hand, and thus both of them end up volunteering for the cleaning with Fujisawa. A while later, after working with everyone and feeling exhausted, Fujisawa directly asks the two what is going on between them. At this time, Himeko's soul is in Teichi's body, and she seizes the opportunity to make things easier for Iori. She reveals that she likes Yori a lot and won't let Fujisawa get close to her. Teichi's soul becomes anxious upon witnessing this and is unsure how to respond. Himeko's plans seem to be working to some extent, and while Himeko's soul and Teichi's soul are cleaning together, Teichi's soul asks Himeko why she did all this. Himeko's soul explains that she couldn't let Fujisawa come between her and Iori. She knows Iori well and is aware that Iori has feelings for Teichi, but has never been able to express them to him directly. After hearing all this, Teichi is incredulous and clarifies that he does not have romantic feelings for Iori. He sees her only as a friend. Himeko advises him, suggesting that a quality within him holds him back. 
She explains that Takey is so concerned with others' feelings that he doesn't want to risk hurting Idori by confessing his feelings, assuming he had any, which he insists he does not. Their discussion escalates into an argument, but eventually, they both realize their mistake and apologize to each other. Later, we see Iori and Himeko, with Teichi and Oki's souls inside them, humorously trying to record each other's confessions. However, before they can finish, the real souls of Iori and Himeko return and seeing what's happening, become angry. In an attempt to bring Teichi and Oki's minds back to reason, they start undressing them, successfully bringing them back to their senses. Once everything settles down, Oki, now back in his own body, asks you a personal question that had been bothering him for a while. Whenever he swapped into Yu's body, he felt anxious whenever he was in front of men. The situation was somewhat strange, but Yu denies acknowledging these concerns and Oki, realizing his mistake, apologizes to Yu and also confesses his love for her. Yu runs away upon hearing this and starts crying alone in a corner, troubled by something on her mind that she had kept to herself. Meanwhile, we see Taichi and Oki walking home together. Oki shares his fears with Taichi, confessing that he feels Yui is drifting away from him and worries she might prefer Taichi over him. Taichi dismisses these thoughts. Later that night, we see Yui crying over something when suddenly her soul swaps with Taichi's, creating a tumultuous situation. Taichi, now with Yui's soul inside him, receives a call from Yui in Taichi's body, revealing that the reason for her tears is not something that concerns her deeply. Regardless of the specifics, Taichi now understands that Yui is troubled by something, so he suggests they meet in person to talk it over properly. After a while, they meet near a park where Taichi's soul, worried about Yu, asks her to share everything with him. Initially, Yu's soul refuses to share anything, but when Taichi's soul reveals that he has found out she is afraid of men, Yu decides to tell him everything. Yu then starts talking about her childhood, where she was very interested in learning karate, thinking it would enable her to protect herself from anyone. However, one day her illusion was shattered when some kids forcibly cornered her and tried to harm her. She managed to escape, but that incident made her fearful of men and prefer staying away from them. Hearing all this, Teichi begins to empathize with her feelings and decides to help her. He suggests teaching her fighting techniques to defend herself against men. Then, he demonstrates a kick aimed at the private parts of the body. He wanted to demonstrate that because of this attack, she could defend herself against any man. After that, their bodies return to normal and Teichi realizes how quickly he had attacked himself. He was fully prepared to endure the pain because his sole purpose was to help Yu overcome her fear. Seeing his sacrifice, Yu understands how she can defend herself. After this, they both head home and encounter Fujisawa, who sees them together, and spreads the news throughout the school the next day. When their friends find out, Teichi assures everyone that he was just meaning Yu to help her. Despite understanding the situation, his friends still have doubts. When Himiko talks to Taichi about it in private, he reiterates his story. Somewhere along the line, Himiko starts to trust him, but then suddenly feels strange and faints. Taichi quickly takes her to the infirmary, and when the other members arrive, they suspect that Hard Seed might be behind her condition, but Himiko denies it. Actually, the cause of her illness was something else, which we will learn later in the story. After everything settles, Yori and Taichi accompany Himiko to her home. Along the way, Himiko. Taking advantage of her illness, asks Taichi to reveal the secret conversation between him and Yui. With no other option available, Taichi agrees to tell everything and later takes them to a park where he shares everything with them. This reassures them that nothing happened between him and Yui the previous night. Upon reaching Himeko's home, she looks at Yori the same way and asks her to share her concerns with Taichi. Taichi is puzzled about what tension Himiko is referring to regarding Iori, and Yori initially intends to keep it to herself. However, when Taichi insists, Yori eventually agrees to share her worries with him at one point. Ori revealed that she was most troubled by the fact that the body-switching issue was causing her to forget her own identity. Taichi found it hard to understand because, so far, the soul-switching hadn't posed a problem for anyone. Yori then shared personal details about how she had become depressed after her father left and was struggling with how to interact with people. She decided to start behaving like others and make an effort to please them, essentially role-playing, which gave her a motive to move forward in life. However, when the body-switching incidents began, she started to feel confused about how she would manage all her identities. Hearing Yori's worries, Taiki realized that if anyone had been profoundly affected by the switching problem, it was Yori herself. She was anxious about her identity, but Taiki reassured her that by overthinking, she was just fueling her misconceptions. Inside her, there's a real Yori that can never be separated from her. The confusion was merely due to the switching issue and she had no need to worry about it. To win over Yori's heart, Teiki revealed to her that even if she were to switch bodies with anyone, he would still be able to recognize her because he knows her real identity well. 
After their conversation, Anori felt greatly relieved and happily went home. The next day, we see Himeko, whose health had worsened, and she was isolating herself from others. During this time, her soul swaps with Teichi's and Himeko's soul, wanting to keep her body safe, takes it to the infirmary. After a while, they both returned to their own bodies and they were alone. Seizing the moment, Teichi asks Himeko why she has been acting so strangely lately and encourages her to share if she's facing any issues. Himeko suddenly gets angry upon hearing Teichi's words, telling him that she is not at all happy with a body swap and that he should understand this clearly. Teichi couldn't grasp what was so troubling about the problem, and that's when Himeko confronts him with one of her dark secrets. She explained how, after the swap, she had forgotten how to trust others, constantly worried that someone else in her body might do something wrong, and she would be the one to bear the consequences. The swapping problem was indeed a significant issue, but everyone was taking it lightly, which was why Himeko's trust in others was diminishing. Teichi began to understand the depth of Himeko's trouble, so he suggested sharing this issue with everyone else to make her work easier. Himeko was initially angry, but Teichi managed to convince her. When Teichi informed everyone, their reactions were unexpectedly understanding. Himeko had feared their anger, but she was wrong. They all understood that trusting others in such a situation could be challenging, so there was no need for her to worry. With this, one of Himeko's concerns was permanently resolved, and she began to trust them again. She left for home with Taichi, thanking him along the way for his help. The next day arrives where Oki is once again proposing to Yu. This time, Yu is puzzled as to why he keeps approaching her despite her repeated rejections. She turns him down once more, and then Oki asks her if she likes Taichi instead. When she says no, Aoki's confidence is boosted again. Later, when Taichi is in the club room, Yori arrives and reveals that it's actually Himeko's soul inside her body. Teichi believes her, and then Himeko's soul asks him what he thinks about Aoki and Yu's relationship. Teichi says that Aoki is a good guy who is trying to express his feelings for Yu, and he is proud of him for that. After this, Himeko's soul asks him what he thinks about Daori. Teichi reveals that he is quite impressed by Daori and respects her. As for love between them, he sees her as a friend for now because he doesn't want to jeopardize their friendship under any circumstances. Hearing all this, tears start to form in the body of Aori and Teichi is completely baffled by her reaction. Just then, Himeko arrives and is surprised to see the two of them alone. Soon after, Teichi discovers that Aiori had been playing a prank on him the whole time, pretending to have Himeko's soul in her body as a test, not a reality. With Himeko's appearance, Teichi begins to understand why Aiori started crying. Previously, Teichi had promised Iori that he could recognize her in any form, which is why he now feels the need to rectify his mistake and follows her. Shortly, we see Teichi and Yori talking together by the pool, where Teichi apologizes for his mistakes. In turn, Aori calms herself down and also apologizes for her actions, admitting that she was the one who thought of playing the prank, which was wrong. After understanding this much, Teichi tells her that she is still allowing her misconceptions to overpower her, which is harmful to her. Iori then reveals that no matter how hard she tries, she cannot identify with her real identity. In a way, Iori felt she was running from her identity, always trying to think and speak according to others' expectations, as if she didn't have a real identity of her own. Teichi listens to her carefully and then clarifies that the identity which helps her understand and cater to others' feelings is her true identity. Gradually, Iori starts to understand, yet she confesses to Teichi that since she joined the school, she hasn't been able to decide on a club to join. Teichi explains that it's because she had many options available, and anyone in her place would feel the same. This helps Yori realize she had been wrong about herself. With this, Teichi confesses his love for Yori and waits for her response. When Yori begins to speak, Teichi is shocked. In reality, Hardseed's soul had entered Yori's body, and from her words, it was clear that she was upset with her weak performances, suggesting she was about to take a drastic step. Before Teichi could fully understand her words, Yori jumps into the pool. Seeing her act so rashly, Teichi quickly jumps after her, rescues her, and immediately takes her to the hospital. Soon after, Iori's treatment begins at the hospital, and her family arrives. Teichi and the others were furious with Hardseed for what had happened. But then Odo Sensai arrives with a proposal. He suggests that since Yori was close to death, there was an opportunity for someone to sacrifice themselves by entering her body. This would potentially save her, and he gives them time to think about this before leaving. During this time, Teichi decides that he will sacrifice himself for Yagori, and everyone present is astonished by his decision. Himeko initially tries to stop Teichi from making the sacrifice, but it's to no avail because he has already decided to sacrifice his life for Iori. On the other hand, Oki agrees with Teichi's decision, but suggests consulting Iori before proceeding. Subsequently, their souls swap, and Iori's soul is informed about the entire situation. 
She is surprised by Taichi's decision but firmly refuses, expressing that she would feel terrible if someone else died in her place. Following this, Yor decides to speak with each of them individually. During her conversation with Taichi, while in Himeko's body, she first responds to his confession, revealing that she has strong feelings for him, but believes their journey ends here. Therefore, she asks for permission to kiss him one last time before leaving. After sharing a kiss with Taichi, Yori and the others confront Odo, where they reveal her decision to sacrifice herself. Before proceeding, Yori secures a promise from Odo that he will not trouble their friends anymore, to which Odo agrees. After a while, Eora returns to her own body, and to everyone's astonishment, she is completely fine and her life has been saved. Soon, they all realize that the entire situation was just a plan by Hardseed, who never intended to harm them. In the end, Hardseed even apologizes for his mistakes. With this resolution, everyone is happy, and the next day, they all gather in their club room. Himeko is somewhat angry after finding out that Taichi had stolen her first kiss while in her body. Despite this incident, they all appear quite content, and more than three weeks have passed. In the club room, Himeko and Oki engage in a competition where if Himiko is late with her next newspaper article, she must give Aoki a drink as a gift. However, she loses, and when Oki teases her about the drink, Himeko, in frustration, attacks him and reminds him that her delay was due to her dedicating time to her work. As a result, Oki ends up owing Himiko a drink instead. During these interactions, we learn two things. First, everything was normal with all of them in the past three weeks without any problems. Second, there had been no communication with Teichi's friend, Iori, since the last time, and she had been absent from school due to illness. In fact, she had not yet completed her confession. The next day arrives when Teichi reaches the club room and sees Himeko working on her news task. During this time, they engage in a substantial conversation. Then Himeko's mind swings and she takes off her clothes and starts appearing in front of Teichi. Meanwhile, other members arrive and misunderstand seeing them together. Somehow, they manage to clarify the situation. That night, while Teichi is sleeping in his room, he hears someone's voice and rushes outside, only to be stopped by his sister, which brings him back to his senses. He is surprised at himself, wondering where he was going. Afterwards, while he was thinking of returning to his room, Teichi receives a call from Iori. He learns that Iori was sitting in her room but suddenly felt the urge to talk to him, leading her to call spontaneously. It was clear that they were both acting on their thoughts. The next day arrives and Teichi receives some bad news from Himeko. She informs him that Aoki and Yua were arrested by the police that morning. Since they were unsure about the situation, they decided to confirm the details with Fujiswa, who revealed that Yua had seen some boys her girls and had severely injured them. When the police were taking her away, Aoki tried to fight the police to save her, leading to both of their arrests. Hearing all this, Teichi couldn't believe that Yu could be behind this, as she wouldn't have the strength to attack the men, even if she wanted to. Following this, they all began discussing how they had started acting strangely, following the cues of a voice. While they were discussing this, Odo-sensei arrives and reveals that he was behind the voice. He had been growing bored with them over the past few days, so he decided to try something new by activating their hidden desires. This meant that whenever they heard that voice, their inner desires would surface. This explained why Yu reacted violently on seeing those boys as her desire was triggered, leading her to attack them. Similarly, when the police were taking Yu away, Oki's desire was activated, prompting him to fight the police in an attempt to save her. Upon learning all this, Aori Odo, also known as Hardseed, was confronted to rectify the situation, but he refused to change anything. He advised them that if they wanted to fix everything, they would have to continue living as they were. After saying this, he left and the next day arrived where we see Oki informing them about everything. The most surprising fact of the day was Yu's absence. She had been despondent since the last incident. Then they all decide that if anyone's desires are activated again, the others will try to manage and support them. That same night, Teichi receives a call from Hayori, where they discuss their confession. Hayori reveals that she hasn't been able to talk about that issue since the last time and needs more time to discuss it. With that, they both go to sleep happily. When the next day comes, Teiki rushes to his school only to find out from Himiko that it wasn't a good day for him. Due to his desire to sleep being activated that morning, he overslept and even his sister's attempts to wake him were futile. The same situation was happening with everyone, making it difficult for them to control their desires. Meanwhile, they were all worried about Yu in the club room, as it had been quite some time since she had come to school, still despondent because of the incident. Later, when heading home, they decide to visit Yu's house to talk to her. Upon arriving, Yu asks them to leave, but despite her repeated refusals, they insist on talking to her and enter her room. Yu reveals to them that she has secluded herself because she doesn't want to risk hurting anyone again. Her intentions are clear, but Himiko disapproves, scolding her that this behavior could make things worse. 
Himeka warns that if Hard Seed thinks she's not performing well, it could have repercussions for everyone urging Yu to control herself. Hearing this, Yu feels regretful once again. And after the tense argument, everyone leaves. The next day, when Taichi arrives in class, he sees Aori arguing with a girl who kept asking about Yu. Taichi realizes he's losing control over his desire again but feels powerless to help in this situation. Then, Fujisu steps in, clears up the misunderstanding with the other girl, and after this, Taichi notices Himeko leaving. After school, Taichi tries to take advantage of the moment to speak with Himeko, but he's unable to control his desire, resulting in him saying harsh things to her to leave. This deeply hurts Himeko, and she walks away. The next day, Taichi had tried calling Himeko several times, but she refused to speak with him. Meanwhile, they all decide to visit Yu again in hopes of normalizing the situation. However, just as they were planning this, Ayara receives a message from Yu explicitly asking them not to come to her house. The following day, we see Taichi apologizing to Himeko for his mistake, and Himeko does the same, resolving a misunderstanding between them. Despite this, they still haven't started talking normally. Himeko has decided to keep her distance from everyone, but the reason behind her behavior remains a mystery, to be revealed later in the story. Later, Taichi, Eiko, and Ayori were sitting together, where Ayori shares her concerns about Himeko, but she's most worried about Yue, who she hasn't seen in days. Taichi agrees and decides to check on Yue himself. Oki, aware of Yu's struggles, advises Taichi against disturbing her. Despite hearing this, Taichi refuses to back down, leading to an argument between the two boys. In the midst of their argument, a strong friendship begins to unravel, with Ayori witnessing the disintegration of their bond. Taichi, after returning home, could only regret his actions, feeling guilty for losing his temper during the argument, which not only damaged his friendship but also inadvertently hurt Ayori. The next day, Ayori tries to speak with Taichi, but he starts avoiding her as much as possible. Himiko faces a similar situation. During class, Fujisawa announces that students need to be divided into teams for an upcoming trip. Ayori makes another attempt to include Himiko in her team, but Himiko flatly refuses. This leads to an argument between them which Fujisawa resolves by placing them both in the same team, along with Taichi and another friend of his. Despite these arrangements, there wasn't much conversation among them. Then, the class teacher Odo enters the classroom at a time when Taichi was alone. Odo had already learned about Taichi's troubles and offers him a chance to confide. He first asks Taichi to help him with arranging the benches, creating an opportunity for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about Taichi's issues. Taichi reveals to his teacher that he has become fearful of talking to his friends because he doesn't want to lose control over his desires and become angry in the presence again. He didn't want to repeat the mistake that had previously hurt Ayori. After hearing this, the teacher tells him that if one friend doesn't help another in their time of need, they're not truly friends. Thus, if Taichi wants to share his feelings, he must do so. The teacher then suggests that Taichi seek advice from Fujisawa, as she could offer him good counsel. Following the teacher's advice, Taichi talks to Fujisawa, who straightforwardly advises him to talk to his friends without hesitation, emphasizing that failing to do so could harm their friendship further. Understanding this, Taichi quickly goes to Aoki and apologizes for his past mistakes. Oki, who also wanted to apologize for his own mistakes, does so as well. This mutual understanding allows them to reconcile, becoming good friends once again and resolving their misunderstandings. Together in a quiet place, they decide it's time to visit Yui at her home to persuade her that isolating herself could lead to suffering and loneliness. Upon reaching her home, they try to talk her around in their way. However, they find Yui to be stubborn, unwilling to easily give up her stance. She believes that to prevent hurting her friends again, she needs to distance herself as much as possible. This perspective, though well-intentioned, is somewhat flawed. When Oki tries to explain this to her, he reassures Yu that if she finds herself in a similar situation in the future, he will always be there to support her. In an unexpected turn, Oki makes another proposal to Yu, but he ends up saying something inappropriate, which angers Yu and makes her consider attacking him. Before she can act on this impulse, Oki stops her and explains that his intention was to show that if she were about to repeat such actions, he would be there to bring her back to her senses and prevent her from going too far. Oki's unconventional approach seems to work as Yu decides to apologize to her schoolmates for her actions. The next day, she comes to school with a lot of food to express her apologies. She also approaches Himiko to let her know she harbors no hard feelings about the previous incident and wishes to reconnect with her. However, Himeko has resolved not to rejoin the group under any circumstances and returns home. That night, Himeko learns that Sensei Goto has come to visit her at home. After sending her mother away, Himeko speaks with Goto and realizes that he is possessed by the soul of Hard Seed, who has come to warn her. He implies that if she does not rejoin her friends, Hard Seed could cause significant harm to her. 
Hardseed did not want Himiko to stay away from her friends and spoil the group's harmony, so he urged her to rejoin them. He also revealed that he knew why she was distancing herself. Himiko harbored feelings for Taichi and feared that if her love desire was unlocked in his presence, it could jeopardize their friendship. Hardseed understood the situation but insisted that Himiko must return to her group under any circumstances, emphasizing the importance of preserving their friendship and everything that was right between them. The day of the school trip arrived and Himeko, despite her reservations, joined Aiori, Teichi, and the others. Throughout the trip, she actively participated and helped with various tasks, which pleased everyone. However, Aiori could sense the underlying distress on Himeko's face. When Himeko injured her hand while working, Teichi came over to check on her. Wanting to maintain her distance to avoid revealing her feelings, Himeko pushed him away and ran towards the forest. Seeing this unfold, Aiori follows Himeko to help her. By this point, Aiori had realized that Himiko might have feelings for Taichi. When Aiori confronts Himeko and asks her about it, Himeko confirms her feelings. The dilemma now is why Himeko, despite her love for Taichi, pushed him and herself closer together. Himeko reveals that she was more concerned about him than herself at the moment and knew that if anyone could help him, it was Taichi himself. Hence, she allowed herself and Taichi grow closer. Aori is initially surprised upon learning this, but soon understands that Himeko's actions were for the sake of their friends, and she did not want her actions to harm their friendship. Taking all these into consideration, Aori advises Himiko that it's time to think about herself rather than others. She suggests that Himiko should stop overthinking, go directly to Teichi, and confess her feelings to him. Initially hesitant, Himiko is persuaded by Aori, who explains that by suppressing her feelings, she's not only hurting herself, but potentially affecting their entire circle of friends negatively. Gaining confidence from Aori's support, Himeko decides she's ready to confront Teichi with her feelings, even if it means facing Aori as a rival. Just as Himeko is about to approach Teichi, a sudden change occurs with Aori, indicating Hard Seed's presence. Hard Seed then reveals to Himeko that he will cease causing trouble for them, and expresses remorse for the distress he's caused. Additionally, Hard Seed informs her that Teichi has fallen down a hill and is seriously injured, urging her to find him quickly. Distraught by this news, Himeko rushes to search for Taichi, but after a while, she realizes it was a cruel joke by Hard Seed. Taichi had indeed fallen, but he wasn't seriously injured. The next day, Himeko bravely confesses her feelings to Taichi, but he does not reciprocate because he is in a relationship with Aori and does not want to betray her. Himeko accepts the rejection gracefully, but not without giving Taichi a kiss and promising him that she will continue trying until he accepts her love. Time passes, and nothing amiss occurs with the group, leading them to believe they finally escaped Hard Seed's influence. However, suddenly, they all start experiencing something extraordinary. Each of them begins to shrink, which they quickly realize is another one of Hard Seed's tricks. The situation escalates their anxiety, and they convene to devise a plan. They decide that during the winter vacation, they will stay together in an empty building to support each other. They choose to stay in this building until 5 p.m. daily, the reasoning being that the shrinking process only occurs until 5 p.m. on the next day as they had planned to meet in the building. Taichi is leaving his home when Hard Seed enters his sister, speaking to Taichi before he leaves. He reveals that it's not Hard Seed in his sister's body, but another version of him, intending to trouble him in his own ways. He mentions he won't harm Taichi directly, as Taichi now bears the responsibility for everyone. If everyone turns into children, it would lead to chaos. Hard Seed also warns Taichi that sharing this information with the others would draw him into the game, adversely affecting everyone. Taichi sets off for the building and on his way, he encounters Yui, who was also heading there. Suddenly, a girl named Yisuke stops Yu and reminds her of a childhood promise after asking her to stop. Yu recognizes Yisuke as a friend from her childhood, but she leaves without responding, puzzled about the promise Yisuke was referring to. Upon reaching the building, they find that Aoki has turned into a child, referring to Yui as Nanaki's older sister a reference that will be explained later in the story. After 5 p.m., everything returns to normal, and they head home, planning to meet again the next day. The following day, while talking to Aori, Taichi learns about her distress related to the transformation. Whenever someone became a child, it allowed them to relive moments from their childhood. Aori herself wished for a chance to relive her life if given the opportunity. That day, it becomes Iori's turn to transform, becoming 14 years old. Surprisingly, at this age, Ayori was very mature for her years, adept at understanding and blending in with those around her. As the evening ends, Ayori returns to her normal age. Soon after, it's Himeko's turn to transform into a little girl. Teichi and Yui take on the responsibility of looking after her. While they are leaving the park, Yui's younger sister and Yisuke encounter Teichi and Yui with a child, leading to a misunderstanding. 
Yu manages to send her sister away, leaving only Yisuke, who once again reminds Yu of a promise. Despite Yisuke's insistence, Yu is still confused and leaves in frustration. Then it becomes Yu's turn to transform, reverting to the age when a traumatic event happened to her. Upon regaining consciousness, the memories frighten her. Ayori steps in to help Yu navigate through this difficult time. Meanwhile, a disagreement arises between Oki and Yu because Oki keeps calling Yu Nanaki's big sister, which eventually angers Yu. Later, Yu finds solace sitting alone in the park with Taichi, who provides significant support and understanding, helping her to cope with her feelings. At this moment, Yu remembers the promise she made to Yisuke. They had vowed to fight each other in the future, when they were learning martial arts in their childhood, a promise Yu had forgotten over time. Meanwhile, Elki begins to remember who Nanaki was. As a child, he had a crush on a girl named Nanaki, and decides to find and talk to her. On his journey with Taichi, he eventually meets Nanaki and first confesses about his childhood crush. He also reveals that he has developed feelings for Yu instead and then returns. On the other hand, Ayori is facing domestic troubles, stemming from spending too much time outside, which leads to scolding at home. Moreover, her abusive stepfather, who is angered by her prolonged absences, has arrived at her house. As these personal issues unfold, the group starts questioning why Taichi remains unaffected when everyone else reverts to their childhood selves. Eventually, they delve deeper into this mystery, compelling Taichi to step forward and reveal everything he knows and has been told by Hard Seed. Taichi also shared that he had kept this information secret because he didn't want to cause harm to his friends. However, with the truth now revealed, there's concern among the group about the potential problems they might face. Indeed, soon after Taichi's revelation, they begin to experience uncontrollable transformations into their childhood selves at any time and place, with even Taichi becoming a victim. This indicated that after Taichi's last revelation, they were all facing significant challenges. Meanwhile, Ayodora receives a call from home, learning that her stepfather has arrived, and if she doesn't return on time, he might cause trouble for her and her mother. Distressed by this news, Ayodora decides to head home. Seeing her upset, Taichi and the others offer their support, insisting on accompanying her to her house to help deal with the situation. As they all head to Aori's home, Yu stays behind with Oki, who had also transformed into a child. Just as Yori is about to knock on her door, she turns into a little girl. At the right moment, Taichi manages to take care of her and bring her outside. While they were all distressed by these changes, Odo appears and admits his remorse for what has happened to them, revealing that the mishaps were caused by his second version, not him. He then restores them to their real forms, and before Ayora goes back, offers her a chance to revisit her childhood, desire she had long harbored. Presented with the opportunity to relive her childhood, Ayori finds herself torn, aware that such an opportunity might never come again. However, when she sees her friends standing by her side, Ayori decides to embrace her current life with hard sea departing, the group proceeds to Ayori's house to meet her mother. There they discuss Iori's troubles, helping her mother understand how her decisions regarding new partners were adversely affecting Iori's life. Realizing this, her mother decides that from now on, any actions she takes will be for Iori's welfare. And so, with these resolutions and newfound understandings, our story concludes.